You're listening to the No Labels, No Limits podcast with best-selling author Sarah Box, where you get the inside scoop on the steps action takers and decision makers take to align their purpose to their principles and achieve their goals in business and life. We focus on the mantra, no labels, no limits, no excuses. And now, without further ado, please welcome your commanding coach with plenty of chutzpah and heart, Sarah Box. Hey there, everybody. This is Sarah, your host of the No Labels, No Limits podcast, a podcast all about shedding our limiting labels and beliefs for nothing other than shining our lights brighter in the world so we can experience more joy and happiness and we can help others do the same. This week, I am joined by Madeline Dunlap, and I'm excited to have a conversation with Madeline on a number of levels, partly because of her own background, what she's doing in the world today, her family situation, all of that. Um, I think you're really going to enjoy her. So I'm going to give you a tiny, tiny intro to her, and then we're going to get into more detail. I'll have Madeline explain more about all of that as we go. But Madeline married her high school sweetheart at 19. So you know, some folks, especially when you get older, you think, wow, that was young. But when you're young, 19 seems ready, you know, in your head. <laughs> but immediately after they got married, he enlisted in the U.S. Marine Corps, and then he went on his first deployment to Afghanistan. So being married at a really young age and then supporting her husband through two combat missions really shaped how Madeline approaches her life. And I'm curious, I'm going to ask her about that because I think that in itself will give us good context for how Madeline approaches her days. But as an entrepreneur, she is growing a new business with her husband who is now working to retire out of the military. So she's been at this a while, this military life, <laughs> entrepreneur life. And they've acquired three car washes in the last eight months. And as you know, so as we're recording this, we're in 2022, we are not in the most stable of economic times. And so as I was learning about Madeline and reading this, I'm thinking, okay, there's more questions I wanna ask her about that. So let's just get started. Madeline, formally welcome to the No Labels, No Limits podcast. Thank you, Sarah. I'm so glad to be here. So I have a couple of lead off questions for you. One is um, what personal characteristic that do you possess um, that you think has served you well in pursuit of your own goals, staying focused and on track? I think the word, word that I would use is tenacious. Um, I, I just don't know. And it's a good and bad thing. I don't know when to quit. Um, so when, you know, when there's a roadblock to me, it's always, there's, there's some way around this, there is some pivot or move that makes this work. Um, and I think from, you know, in thinking back to how being a military wife at a young age influenced that, I think it really enhanced that characteristic about me. Um, because there's a lot of things you don't control. You have to learn to work with what you have. Yeah. That's true, right? Well, with that, then I want to ask you, because we've been in this kind of volatile up and down, mm -hmm. a back and forth thing, you know, what's going on health wise in our own country, in the world, all that, what's happening economically. So, but what's been on your mind lately? Yeah, you know, actually this morning I woke up and on Thursday, I always spent a little time on LinkedIn posting something. Um, and today I really felt called to post this, this quote that I use as a personal, I don't know, reminder. Um, and that is, you're not always going to feel motivated and that's why you learn to be disciplined. And it, it was really resonating with me because there's just, as a mom of three kids, entrepreneur, working full-time at the Rewild Group, there's a lot of labels that we all, and a lot of positions and things we're all pursuing. And um, I would, I'd say I'm usually a very motivated individual, but there are just days where I wake up and the sparks don't fly and it doesn't feel like magic and I don't feel inspired. And I find that I personally immediately go to what's wrong with me? Why, why am, I, am I not appreciative for the opportunity? Have I not been blessed with these great gifts that I want to be able to use in the world? And um, that post was uh, almost a reminder for me more than anyone else, but hopefully it, it really impacts others, helps others that people who are successful are not successful because they always feel the energy or they always feel the drive or they always feel motivated and that it's okay to have those days where 
you don't, you don't actually want to even sit down at your computer, but you, you choose to, right? You decide to, to let the action go, or maybe you decide not to, maybe you decide not to. Um, I don't know. That really spoke to me because as somebody who is always actively pursuing things, there's just been seasons in life, days, weeks, where I don't feel so, so engaged. And um, I'm really trying to lean into that, to give myself that space, knowing that there are days where it's just the opposite, where I feel like I can go 150 miles an hour and everything is going right. So when you do that, when you first start allowing yourself the space to kind of just give yourself the space and let that happen, was there a part of you that thought, what if I never come back? What if I <laughs> Like you're going, what if I relax, but the old Madeline never shows up? Did you ever worry that you wouldn't like go back to 150? I don't think so. I don't think so. I I think that there's a saying people have said this to me, many different people have said this to me about kids, right? That the, the days are long, but the years are short. And I think that's true of our lives too. And all these days that go by really quickly add up. Um, and all of a sudden we are in a different place. We have grown and matured and changed. And I don't know if we're always in tune with that. And so I think that those moments, I never worry that I'm not going to turn in or go back to the person I was. I always hope that taking that time is going to help me be who I, I, I'm supposed to be next, right? That it's always this, that's the forward movement, you know, the focus in me that it's always... It, it's trying to compete with yourself and improve and grow so that what comes next is, it might be different, but um, maybe more in tune and more in line with what you're supposed to be doing. Well, and if you don't slow down enough to recognize where you are and what's going on, you just keep plowing ahead on autopilot, if you will. Yeah, on autopilot. Exactly. So tell me what you learned from being married at a young age. And then being not just married, but married and in a military world. Mm. What did that teach you? (laughs) I could maybe write a book about that, I suppose. But um, a lot of things. Um, One, people, the first thing is I think marriage is an incredible thing. And I think it's also something that takes a tremendous amount of work. And it doesn't matter if you're 19 or if you're 35 or 55, really the age has nothing to do with that. Um, So when people are astonished at that, that that must've been so hard, I'm sure there were things about it that were more challenging, but um, I didn't know the difference. And like you said, 19 now sounds like, oh my goodness gracious, what were my parents thinking, giving their blessings? (laughs) Um, It seems with every passing year to feel younger and younger. You know, I can remember a day where we, um, we were sitting down to write Troy's will. It's a very weird, odd, almost morbid thing to be doing. It is weird. when you just graduated high school twelve months earlier, and um, and yet you had to do it. It made me appreciate time because it wasn't something that we had control over. I, for that entire time while he was in California and in Afghanistan, I lived in Colorado. So we lived um, for weekend trips. And when he was in Afghanistan, he we wrote letters that would take six weeks to, to get to the other side of the world um, and sometimes longer. And um, it the, the appreciation for the time you had, the focus on that the things that were within your control and relinquishing control over the things you don't have still does it, I'd like to say that I was cured of that I wasn't but it it made me really really understand even with my tenacious attitude that there are truly things that are completely outside of your control and your job is to identify the things that you can control and try to work there um yeah it, it was this almost, it was such a humbling experience because you go from, you know, in 19 years old, you're invincible. You can do and believe you can, the world is your oyster. You can do anything and everything. And yet there were these very harsh realities that Troy was spending days, months in danger. 
And there was nothing I could do to contribute to him coming back home. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. That is hard at any age, right? Yes. And to your point, marriage doesn't, doesn't matter what age you are when you're married. It is a, <laughs> it's a, um, it's a trip. <laughs> And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's no, it's true. You got to pack your bags. And unless you're going to bail, right? And clear, uh-huh. if you're going to bail, well, in my, my theory is if you're going to bail, don't bother. Like, just save everybody trouble. Don't get married. <laughs> Put a register up and say, we don't want to get married, but we'd like some gifts. I'm, and right. come with me. Let's do it. But honestly, and I don't mean to be flip about it, um, it's not um, just like, simple and like Mm. just the things you went through and like you can't control that right and how that must have been hard for you or for any wife or Mm -hmm. husband whose wife maybe is deployed um, or partner deployed how hard that is right and yet you have to live your life and then you've got kids you're raising Yes. And thank goodness we didn't have children when he was in the Marine Corps. That was a very intentional and smart decision, I think. But it it was, it was, you know, when I think about how it influenced or what I've carried from it today, one of the things is being able to operate under stressful situations. There was this constant, I mean, there was a time during Troy's first deployment where I went six weeks without hearing a word from him. And the reality was that if he was hurt, I would have, I should have heard, but you don't know that. I mean, six weeks is this, it's just eternity. Yep. And yet the entire world kept moving and life kept moving. And I had to figure out a way to operate, to continue moving, to make forward progress. Um, And so when there are stressful situations in my life, I've gotten better at compartmentalizing. I've gotten better at saying, well, Yes, that, that's this reality I have to deal with, and it's not something to be ignored, but the world keeps moving, and I have to find a way to do that, too. Okay, that's a great segue, because, you know, right now we know there are people who are going through tremendous upheaval and change, and yet the world keeps moving. Mm-hmm. So how does that, your lessons there, translate into the work that you are passionate about doing today? Yeah, so the thing is, is that how does it translate? Yeah, I think that it's, it's in a couple of ways, I think. Um, The work that I do today really focuses on, on impacting and helping businesses, helping businesses understand that as they grow their business, similar to how we grow relationships or grow children, um, that, that things change. Um, and that if you can understand and recognize these changes, again, there are a lot of things you can't control, but if you can understand them and understand how you can leverage them or um, not be so at odds with them, that you're going to have greater levels of success in growing your organization. I think of it a little bit like learning about yourself, um, learning what Uh, And I think this is part of any journey, but was definitely part of mine from an early age was learning what I, I learning what I could, what, what helped me deal with stress, learning how it learning what didn't help me with stress. Um, For me, it was the solution was really being very busy. I was going to school full time. I worked two jobs. I was essentially home to sleep for six hours a day. And that that was what I learned. Um, that's how I was able to be successful under those constraints. And a lot of businesses, it's very similar. If you can understand the constraints, um, you can understand what things really help you grow and what things don't help you. You're going to have better success overall. So that's really what I spend my time doing here today is working with business owners um, to understand those constraints and, and how they can more successfully grow their organization. Okay. Well, you say that, you know, the thriving small businesses support their employees, right? And, yeah. and their employees' families. And that mm-hmm. a thriving small business actually helps make strong homes and vibrant communities. So you also say, though, that in your experience working with small businesses, they're far from doing that. They're far from thriving, yeah. let's say. So say I come to you, I'm one of your small businesses, which I very well could be because I'm a small business. 
what what would we do together? How could you help me like check my own mindset, what's going on with me, learn? Um, what would that journey look like, Madeline? Yeah, so um, it really starts with understanding what stage of growth your business is in. Um, and, and when you understand the stage um, and the methodology we use is, is a research-based methodology, what comes with that are these these understandings of these are the challenges you're going to commonly face. These are things that can help you mitigate those challenges. I almost think of it as a lens with which to look at your business. So often business owners, um, especially small business owners, their business and them are, are basically like this. They're so intertwined. And because of that, it can be very, very challenging to really see what's going on to get enough perspective to be able to step back enough. So that's really understanding. It's that first step of understanding what stage of growth am I in and what does that mean? And how do I start to organize these things in my business that I'm too close to, to really be objective about? How do I start to use the knowledge to take a step back and start to organize what's going on in my organization? It's very knowledge heavy. It's really not any quick gimmicks or tricks or anything like that. It's really this journey of what does my business need from me? Where is it? How do I get to know my business in the same way we take kind of like personality assessments or strength assessments to learn about ourselves? Um, it's, it's kind of like that with the business. So that's really what the, the, kind of the first step of that journey is just learning about the business. And sometimes that is through online resources. And I never actually work with the business. Sometimes it's through more of a coaching um, engagement, or maybe maybe we do take a deeper dive and actually do some consulting engagement. But the whole, no matter what method it takes, it's really about helping a business owner understand and learn about their business not the details, not the things that only that business owner knows intimately, but probably the pieces that they didn't realize they needed to know about before going into business. It's rounding out that knowledge and help allowing them or aiding them in some level um, to, to use that knowledge to help their organization. So Madeline, can you share with us what the stages are? I mean, you use a stages mapping. Yeah. So what are the stages? Yeah. So the stage, we actually look at stages based on the number of people or employees within the organization. And one of the biggest misconceptions, whenever I talk about stages, there's seven of them, is that everyone thinks this is maybe our, this is our driver growth mentality, um, that the goal is to get to seven. And it, it's really not. I mean, there are so many amazing organizations that are contributing to their employees, their employees' families, and their communities that will never be a stage seven business. Um, but seven stages, the first one goes from one to 10. And the, the name of that stage is startup. And that doesn't mean startup in the, it, actually the terminology was created before we had such a startup economy. But it's this idea that in stage one, things are more fluid. It's smaller, you can be agile. You can try new things. You've got generalists on your team. A lot of times, everyone in a stage one business is going to wear a couple of hats. You're not overly specialized. Culture is so critical there. Every single person contributes to a big part of the team. Stage two then comes uh, around 11 to 19 employees. And both stage one and stage two businesses, these are going to be your owner-centric businesses. These are businesses that are very tightly held, very small communities. Um, and they operate differently than our enterprise centric businesses, which start at stage three, around 20 employees and go up to around 500 employees. Um, so again, it's not, well, I'm trying to climb the, the steps. And for some businesses, you know, the other side of it is that they are, they are trying to grow their business, but for entrepreneurs, I think the most important place to start is where are you at right now? What's working in the business? What are your goals? How do we get there? Um, but it's it's kind of the tough work of digging in and, and really getting to know your business. What does your business need from you? 
how can you provide those things? Do you as the leader have that skill set? Do you have the desire to do those things? How do we match those things up? It's not too different as I say that. It's not too different than marriage <laughs> because there's these entities involved and it's it's this it's this process of learning about the other individual or learning about your business. And sometimes your business needs things you're not good at. 19 years old, my husband wanted home cooked meals. My mom cooked my meals for me. I didn't know. <laughs> you didn't care which home they got cooked in? <laughs> really? Well, I'll take you to, to mom to take you home with mom and dad and she'll make you a home cooked meal. But it was an area I didn't have experience in, but was an area I could learn and grow in. It did not happen overnight. I probably until we had kids and it was too much of a hassle to go out and get anything to eat that we figured out. I figured out how to cook. Um, but, you know, your business might need more marketing and you don't know how to do that. And you don't even want to know how to do it. Um, so maybe you hire someone like I could have maybe hired a chef. If you have the budget to do so, maybe that's the solution. But it's things like that. It's things like understanding what is it my business needs for me instead of this just guesswork. Um, and we don't just take the research or the stage that your business is in. That's kind of our outline. But we really take and say, your specific business, what's showing up there? What are these symptoms we can pull out to say, this is kind of where we'd expect you to be um, as a stage one? Where are you maybe? doing better than we'd expect? Where are you struggling? And how do we use this framework to improve those areas? So you have a very successful stage one business, or you have a good foundation to grow the organization to the next stage. So I imagine that when you start working with folks at whatever level, you're aligning what where they are currently with where they actually desire to be. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know, because your approach might change then. Like if I'm a stage one, but eventually want to be a stage seven, your directions to me might be very different and your coaching and support. Yeah. A hundred percent. And for some organizations that have grown kind of, they've had success, they've grown, they might've really missed things along the way that are really jeopardizing their existing business. And it's not uncommon for that business to be eyeing growth into future stages, really making it more risky for the organization. So sometimes the first work you have to do is to shore up where that business is to fill in the gaps that were maybe missed along the way. But it always has to be with the mindset of where are you trying to head? Because absolutely, if your goal is to scale the business versus to have a great lifestyle business, um, they're, they're different objectives. So the plan has to be different. Well, and I think people have, can be tripped up I, if they think they want to have a lifestyle business, but they keep doing these other things and it's growing and growing and they're going, I've created a monster. I don't even want to work there anymore because what I've done. Right. Right. And it could be totally successful financially. Right. Right. It absolutely can. It absolutely can. You can. <sighs> running a business in each stage is very, very different. And I think that it's an important realization. Again, it's that mindset that this it, the business changes incrementally. You're so you're stuck in the day to day. You're growing, you're growing, you do the things you attend the meetings, you you fulfill your calendar obligations day in and day out. And then all of a sudden you look up and the business is different and it requires different things from you. And those might be things that leadership, what the business needs from you might be something you don't actually even enjoy or want to do. You enjoyed it a few stages ago because that was really in line with your natural leadership style and how you allocated your time was really in line with what you enjoyed. But now it's a totally different thing. And Coming to that realization before you end up there can be, I mean, an invaluable realization because there's there are strategic decisions to make the entire way through that. And if you have clarity around reality is, is I know that as we get into a larger organization, I'm not going to get to do the work very much. And that's what I really got in the business to do. Then maybe you're setting up, we've seen businesses set up referral networks, right? They don't actually want to get that big, but they've got, you know, they do a great job of business development and they set up uh, referral networks with other professionals in the area and make and generate money that way without actually having to grow their business larger. 
again, that all comes from really understanding what that business is going to look like and what it's going to require from you as you grow. That's really powerful. And it's um, liberating to remind folks, myself included, that, you know, we need to be conscious of what we're creating as we go and being willing to say Mm. the next step or that next level is or is not for me. And if it is for me, this is what's required of me. And if it's not for me, here are other options. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you're failing. It just means you have a different model perhaps to apply. Absolutely. It's, I laugh because it's surprising to me how many times we're sitting in a room and the business owner, you know, we're noodling a question and they're, you know, they're, they, they're not sure the answer. And it's like, well, what, what do you think we should do? And it's like, well, it's, it's totally up to you. Like, this is your business. You get to make this decision. <laughs> there is no one who, there, there shouldn't be anyone telling you what you have to do. And, and the second that you feel like you're making a decision because something or someone external to you as the leader thinks you should and and you're not bought into that you're in dangerous territory you're supposed to be living your life not theirs and it doesn't mean you can't have you shouldn't have guidance trusted coaches and advisors um but i just i find that at least for me personally i'm always willing to stand behind a decision i made i feel a lot less committed to decisions i made because so and so told me that i had to. I think if we're honest, we're all that way, right? We can mouth it and say, oh yes, blah, blah, blah. But (laughs) our show, our consistency in how we show up and implement doesn't bear fruit. It doesn't really reflect that in our work. Yeah. So it's that congruence between what comes out of our mouth and then what our behavior is, you know? So I think that's powerful. So I want to switch gears again on you for that. Um, I'm interested just in your own journey. What do you think you and your husband through this, your journey, um, your transition, starting your business, your work at Rewild, what do you think your girls are learning from that? (laughs) Have they expressed anything? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So our, we've got three girls, um, almost eight, six, and just turned four. And it's been interesting. We we live in a beautiful community, uh, very successful, very blessed community. And the car wash business is entirely different than what I would say our normal circle of influence looks like. Um, and so my <laughs> my eight year old is has gotten accustomed to, you know, looking for, well, that person's littering now, or how rude that 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 person would be so careless to to drop that trash there. Don't they know somebody has to pick that up? And it's been this wild experience in more ways than one, but watching them pick up these concepts has been very interesting. I I hear them thinking about marketing tactics, although they don't think of it that way. And well, maybe we should put signs out and uh, maybe we could give out coupons and then people come back to our car wash more and oh, look, it's going to rain. That's good for the business. So, <laughs> so they've picked up all these things in their own age appropriate levels. Um, but I, you know, what are they picking up versus what do I hope they're picking up? It's probably hard for me to to de- to delineate those two things. Um, this this lesson we've been really working on with them though, uh, and that is, if you want to try something new, you're going to have to be okay being bad at it for a while. That doing anything new is going to require that the first time you do it, you're probably not going to do it very well. You're going to have to learn from that and you're going to have to be okay with that. If you are so proud that everything you do has to be perfect, you're probably not going to learn a lot. And I, they've definitely seen us learn that because we're going into a brand new industry. There's a lot of, there's so many things to learn as anyone who's in business knows. And so it does feel like every single day we're learning something new. We're trying something out and it doesn't work. We have to change it. And that even in that, you can have a good attitude. You can have a grateful heart um, that you can work hard and be appreciative. We've had challenges. I think this is maybe true for a lot of business, small businesses, especially ones that serve local customers. 
um, crime is really, really up in our areas. And that's been a challenge that we've been grappling with. Um, so it's been an interesting time to help our girls understand that we can't treat all of our customers who the majority of them are wonderful people in a skeptical way, just because we've had challenges with others and um, trying to balance that, that you have to be thoughtful and make sure you're protecting your, your property and your things and yourselves. And then also still being a welcoming and, and cautiously trusting individual and, and caring to others. Um, so that balance has also been an interesting thing that they're learning and we're learning as well. This reminder to keep a positive and engaging attitude, even when I think it's human nature when you're dealing with something challenging or you're hurt in some way to just, you know, close the doors and um, hunker down, protect yourself. And, um, you know, stay tuned to see if that was the right, <laughs> that's the right the right mentality. Um, but yeah, I mean, the number of things we're learning and hopefully that they're learning are, are, um, it's probably a long list. So do you map yourself against your stages as well? I do. I do. And, um, you know, the, the thing about a car wash business is that it's fairly, um, well, at least the ones that we have are not employee intensive, but as a stage one business, um, and we will probably be a stage one business for a long time, there are just these, these very foundational things to do. So we have a series of guidebooks. That's one of the ways that businesses take this information um, and use it on their own business. And so my husband and I, we've got our branding core values guidebook. We're reading through it. We're doing the workbook. We're establishing these brand values. And we just did this exercise yet, or we just used this yesterday. We had established our brand values and we were looking at signage, um, getting signage printed. And it was like, well, which one of these is better? This is one way to display it. Here's another way to display it. And we went back to our values. One of our values is accessible. We want to make a, a great wash easy for everyone. So we went with the one that was simpler. Is it going to help us upsell? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, but it's simpler. It's easier to understand. So yeah, the, the things that I have learned and seen businesses benefit from, it's been really fun to apply it to this business. As a consumer yeah, of a car wash. No, recently I just, I went in and I'm looking, it's like all these bells and whistles, right? They yeah. need to be full service. Now they've got all these cool little self-service things, but I'm not used to that because I don't go there that often. And I knew this guy could tell. I looked over, I'm reading this and I'm still reading and I'm thinking, what? I mean, it was really confusing versus their real old simple signs. Option A, B, C, D, right? Pick one, tell us we're good. This guy comes over, he goes, first time looking at that. And I said, mm -hmm. <laughs> he says, would you mind if I helped you? I said, you can help me every time if you want. But I mean, it was really quick. He said, just don't, don't bother with this. Just look here, <laughs> right? He made it really simple, but I'm thinking, yeah, yeah you're signed to what you just said, right? redo those signs so that people who are just there for that can get it quick. Right. Yeah. Luckily they had a person that was floater, right. And came <laughs> over and said, you stuck. Helped you through it. <laughs> well, and I'm not too proud anymore. It's like, what could you figure it out? I'm going to be backing up your line here if you don't help me anyway. So, but um, I wanted to ask you from an economic model. So really yeah. that's a lot of expansion in eight months, right? Yes. And yes. in and amongst learning and what you're doing. So, what do you think small businesses can or should be hopeful in our current environment, which mm. has uncertainty and, you know, like you noticed crime and that, but there are bright spots. So what do you think folks could or should be hopeful for either in your own business or the work you're doing with other small businesses? Yeah. You know, I think that uncertainty is always present, even if it's not, um, even if it's not such an intense focus on uncertainty. The reality is there's always been uncertainty. The last couple of years, it seems like that's the only thing we can even think about. Um, and I, I think the reality is there is more uncertainty definitely today than there has been in years past. My mentality is, is we all, I mean, there's kind of limited choices. We all still have to operate, right? It's like the world keeps spinning. 
And so, yeah, it's it's not it's not the ideal economic climate to be starting a business then. <laughs> but I would say that good opportunities rarely come without some some things that are. Not, I mean, I've never seen a perfect opportunity. Um, and so, it to me, it's about it's about choosing compared to what you know. We could wait ten years and try and expand then, um, and I think that's true of a lot of businesses. And for some businesses, that's going to be the right the right choice. That based on their goals, they aren't going to reinvest. They're going to stay a little safer. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. To go back to my earlier thought, that I don't think you always have to feel bold. I don't think you always have to feel like you, you know, you want to run a marathon. You just might want to sit on your porch with some sweet tea and. And just enjoy. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, but for us, uh, this was a way, it's a lot of reasons we got into the car wash business, but um, a big piece of this is that it's, it's local. It's investing. Um, we've all, at least I won't speak for everyone, over the last couple of years, I've struggled with going into places I've always frequented and it feeling a lot different that there isn't this connection, that there isn't this, I don't want to call it customer service because it's not that. It's really more of this this engagement and connection between people. And the car we didn't pick the car rush industry just in 20, just you know, in 2022 because of this current economic climate. But the reality was is that as we got into it more, it was this place where we could be a light in communities talk with, meet with all kinds of people, um, offer them the level of connection, the level of, or the experience that we, we like to feel as customers in a local area. And I can't tell you how many times I've talked to customers that have genuinely thanked me for just spending two minutes talking to them, having a meaningful conversation, looking them in the eyes and and building that connection. One of our values that we ended up with from the exercise was community, that we value, we value the communities that we have the opportunity to do business in. We want to be connected to them. Um, and there is something that is humbling and connecting about just having a parking lot where you're sweeping up trash and you're waving to people who are just washing their cars. It's so simple. It's so, um, it's, it's heartwarming. It's so basic and simple that that connection is, I hope we see more of it. I hope we see more of that. And I think that if I take that, which really only applies to my business, but I'm thinking about our business, I think it's, remember why you started doing this, because I think the why is bigger than the uncertainty and getting back to those core, this is, this is what it's all about. Um, Because there's never going to be a job or a business or an opportunity that is without uncertainty or without risk. And I think sometimes in our highly technological, very advanced society, we think we can eliminate risk. And the reality is, is that will never happen. That will never happen. We will always have risk and uncertainty. And you, we have for centuries, for decades, for we've always created beautiful lives, even in the midst of uncertainty. And while I know that the last couple of years has shaken that up, um, but it's, it remains true. It remains true. It does remain true. And I I love that you're a beacon of that. As you're talking about sweeping, I'm thinking, but those are the things that you can do. So simple, like they're simple, right? And yet, or even just having someone feel seen as you're making eye to eye connection with them, that might be the only real connection they've had all day. And what it just took you two minutes. Yeah. No, I, I think you've described so articulately, Madeline, the slight shift in engagement, right? Mm. And honestly, I, I keep frequenting this. I, we worry when we went into lockdown, we thought, okay, what is the at-risk business near us? We will go there, right? And it was mm. this small little restaurant that would do takeout. And I they stayed takeout a long time because I said, are you ever going to open up again? She goes, only takeout until 
she goes, we are packed. We don't have the staff, but we are packed and we are blessed, right? Like we're, mm-hmm. not, we're safe. And, but part of it is, is the way they engage. And, um, and, you know, you don't want someone who's worked so hard to do something that really serves a community yes. to fail. But part of it was having that conversation with her too and going, oh, I see. And, um, and there is no time that is risk-free. You are, yeah. You've stated that so eloquently. And whether we make a decision to do it today, 10 years from now, our lives will progress. The world will keep going on. So it's just a matter of what we want to do and making sure it's aligned. And when you went back, you and your husband went back and looked at your values, you know, if we would all do that a little more frequently, mm. like, what is my value here? What, not my personal value, but what are our values, our guiding values? And if it's not aligned with that, then why are we considering it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, expansion and investment isn't the right move for any, for everyone blindly. Um, but it, yeah, I, I think it comes back to this mentality when people, <laughs> and we get a lot of sideways glances when, when I was talking to a girl at, at the bank and, and she's like, oh, you guys both work full time and you're growing this business. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of, that's kind of interesting. And it's just, <laughs> uh, you know, we just, we get one shot at this, you know, we get one shot at this and, and there are absolutely no guarantees um and we want to make we want to leave this mark we we have been blessed with the ability to do this and um that if i go back to like a core driving i i i've thought about this a lot what drives me and i just think i've been blessed with a lot of things a lot of things that come naturally a lot of things that i can figure out and circumstances and all all these sorts of things but I think at the end of my life, I'm going to want to look back and say, wow, look at what I did with those things as opposed to and, and be proud of that. And all of that comes down to the daily or the the it's taking these initiatives. And there's plenty of things I've said no to and will continue to. You have to know when to say no. Um, but I if there is, you know, if you're out there, if you're a small business who's weathered this storm, a local small business that had to shut their doors, that had to pivot in a way that, oh, it's so challenging. I just, my heart goes out to you and I hope that you've, you stay strong and you, you remember that that is such an important part of community and of people feeling connected and valued because you're absolutely right there that sometimes that wave or that quick two minutes that we talk to a customer at a car wash is the human interaction they get that day is the is the one moment they get seen and um, just in asking how you're doing and small local businesses do that amazon can't do that (laughs) as convenient and as much as I appreciate Amazon so much and my loyal customer, they can't do that. They don't do that. That's not what makes it feel like home. And that, um, that has been just this blessing in this, in these businesses. And I hope and believe that we can be a blessing to those communities in that way. Madeline, tell folks who have listened to you and thought, I got to connect with her. (laughs) Tell them the best way to do that. I know that you have a calculator. People can check out and see where their business is on that. So share with us the best way to connect with you and how folks can get access to the calculator. Yeah. So connecting with me on LinkedIn is a great place. Madeline Dunlap. Got my name right up here. Um, And then the stage calculator on our website, rewildgroup.com. Um, the stage calculator will actually pop, as soon, pop up as soon as you get there. But that's really the, where is my business? And it's the starting point. And I would encourage anyone who is interested in learning about it, take the assessment, figure out what stage you're in, and shoot me a message on LinkedIn. I would love to just have a conversation, learn about your business, and share a few tidbits that you might focus on in your given stage, um, that is such a thrilling and inspiring part of my work. When we're thinking about not feeling the magic, that always feels like magic, talking with business owners about um, this information that I've seen change businesses. Uh, So that's a great way to get started. Okay, and one piece of advice that you would give 
all your girls as they go and grow? Wow. That's such a big question, Sarah. And it's hard okay, because yeah. as a mom, <laughs> as a mom, you give advice all day long, especially when they're that little. I think that the piece of advice I would give them is that uh, they've been created with greatness in them. But greatness doesn't mean that you are, um, you're a celebrity or you're in some big public office. Greatness is really about the human being that you are. And you may be a stay-at-home mom. You might be a small business owner. You might be a, a middle manager in a large corporation. Greatness is the person you choose to be and how you influence the people around you. Um, and that that's my hope is that they see and find their space in the world and that they, that it feels like greatness to them. Wow. That's powerful. Madeline, thank you so much really for being a guest on the no labels, no limits podcast. It's been fun to learn about you, your journey. You are certainly wise and um, it will be interesting to see what feedback we get on the podcast, but also what happens with you in your many lives that you're leading <laughs> and the and the roads you're taking. So again, thanks so much. Thank you, Sarah. It's been a pleasure. You've been listening to the No Labels, No Limits podcast with best-selling author, change agent, and strategic vision coach, Sarah Box. You can grab the show notes and find out how to work with Sarah at sarahbox.com forward slash no labels, no limits podcast. We'd love this podcast to reach as many people as possible. So please remember to rate, leave a five-star review and share the podcast with someone you think would get value from this conversation. Until next time, keep taking those daily action steps to align your purpose to your principles and achieve your goals in business and life.